It's the Bush League Mud Show. It's the Bush League Mud Show. Let's go. Are you ready? Make some noise! All right, yo, yo, yo. What is going on? It's another edition of Bush League Mud Show. Slade. Hang on. I got to turn these lights off. Oh. <laughs> That's going to be a theme today. It's PJ. Uh, uh, be sure to like and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and hit us up. Follows will follow back on social media, Bush League MS Pod, giving you an AEW review from this past Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022. It would have been so awesome if it would have been a 222 22 yeah. type show. Well, NXT didn't take advantage of that. NXT 2.0? No. They, they didn't even think they, they, they Two is do, in their two, name. I know. They didn't even do it. And. Most likely, Elevation didn't do anything. I don't know. I didn't watch well, it. Well, Did you? I don't know. I guess apparently uh, we have to start watching that because there's some angles that the angles uh, that we're not stairway aware. gang is talking about. Yeah. So this one, they were in Bridgeport, Connecticut. This is, we're about two, two and a half weeks away from AEW Revolution, that pay-per-view. So it is time to start putting things yep. into place, getting things geared and ready for that so this whole aw dynamite it was advertised around the two tag team battle royals we got one tonight we're gonna get the 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 other one the next week this company in their damn battle royals i'll tell you uh another thing that people were looking forward to chris jericho and eddie kingston coming face to face that one i think lived up to what it was supposed to be We ended up with a main event of Brian Danielson versus Daniel Garcia. Um, and then we ended up with the Kings of the Black Throne versus Penta and Pack, which we were, the rumors were out there that maybe we might see a certain someone. We'll mm-hmm. touch on that uh, as we get down the line. And Jay Cargill versus The Bunny for the AEW TBS Championship. Um, this, again, they were in Bridgeport, Connecticut, BJ. They did about a little shy of 6,000 tickets that were distributed. There was still about just under 1,000 tickets that were still available for the Webster Bank Arena. And kicking this thing off was the first tag team battle royal. The thing about it, I, I think for me, their battle royals are too clustered. Like there, there's no bad, there's no balance with the battle royal, right? Yes. Like I feel like WWE when it comes to the Royal Rumble, mm-hmm. the ring is too thin now. Yeah, because okay. we try yeah. to. I, th- yeah. I feel like we try to highlight all the entrances and people who are coming down. We don't want the ring yes. to be too congested because yeah. they have a presentation. They have a, a, a yeah. thing. They yes. have a formula in terms of how they want to shoot this. Mm-hmm. It's not like the Royal Rumbles from when we were all kids and you would at one point sometimes have 15, 15 20 guys, guys yep. big guys in the ring. Now we're trying to keep it spaced out no more than maybe about six to eight. Yeah. Well, AEW, we make it not just not just your average battle royal. We make it a tag team battle royal, yes. and then you get ten tag teams in there. Yeah, so you got twenty guys. At so once. you got twenty guys, and yeah. we all start all at the same time. So there's it's a always whole bu- to kick off the show too. They've yeah. never really well. I feel like showcased you, you, it at the end. You would have to though. I I feel well, that they if they you at you least get that make part. it more of a bigger deal though. I would think mm. you'd have to hold off on that. Well, why make this one a bigger deal when you've I, got another one next well, week? That, see, that's the problem. <laughs> that. That's but here's the, the thing: the yeah. one next week will probably open up the show. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so who all was in this particular tag team battle royal? The fact that. We were already filling it up with the teams that we had. Uh, just to let you know, AEW is filthy with tag teams. So you're probably yeah. going to see teams like Bear Country, <laughs> and you're going you're going to see teams yeah. like that next week's. So uh, you get Dark Order, uh, John Silver, and Alex Reynolds representing them. You got the Young Bucks. You got the Butcher and the Blade. I'm assuming both guys are 100 percent now. Uh, so Butcher and the Blade, we got Best Friends in there, we got Private Party, we got the Gun Club, Santana and Ortiz, who I thought were going to be the favorites you would think. with the momentum that they had. Yeah, they killed uh, that. Spoiler alert, they didn't win it. <laughs> yeah. uh, we had FTR, who was the most credible besides the Young Bucks mm-hmm. in this. We got 2.0, these guys never won anything. No. And then we got Red Dragon, the team of Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. So we got 10 teams in there, and in order to, to eliminate, of course, uh, this is, you know, it's reasonable. Both members of the team have to be eliminated. Yeah. Huge brawl to start this thing off. No entrances. No one got an entrance. We just went right into this immediately once the show came on. We got people fighting in and out of the ring. We've got Blade knocking Alex Reynolds of the Dark Order out, but he's spending so much time posing. That allows John Silver to toss him out. 
Santana and Ortiz, they get rid of the gun club. Now, my issue with this is, and look, th- these are never going to go perfectly, right? Yeah. There's always going to be individuals in a battle royal that you feel maybe if they weren't going to win, maybe they should have stuck around a little longer. Yeah. We got the gun club. We got mm-hmm. Billy Gunn's kids with a vicious persona yeah. now. Yes. They were to be taken serious for about a good three-week stretch until Mm -hmm. they got their title match with Jurassic Express. And even though they lost that match, I said, you know what? These two should still be hanging around. Yeah. Because I like what they bring. Their dad uh, reeks of credibility. Yes, he does. And their dad doesn't really need to work anymore unless they're doing the trios Mm -hmm. matches so he can be their muscle. Yes. uh, Because he's much bigger than his boys. And I assume that, okay, they're not going to win, but they'll be in this for a while. No, they were one of the first teams that were eliminated. Santana and Ortiz, they got rid of both of them without much trouble. Mm-hmm. And so they're they're bitching to their dad on the outside. The butcher, he double close lines the Bucks. Now we get best friends. They get a little action in. They hit a low bridge uh, butcher out. Where they low bridge him out of yeah. the ring. Red Dragon, they get rid of Chuck Taylor. And then Private Party, uh, they get put out immediately back-to-back with Matt Hardy slowly again walking out on them. So this is a this, this is a is new a theme, theme yeah. with him. Uh, Santana, he dumps out 2.0 with the Bucks. They toss Ortiz and double-kick Santana out of the air. FTR and the Bucks, they get a showdown, which gets broken up in a hurry. So that tells yes. me that FTR and the Bucks are going to have a match down the road at some point. Well, they have to have it, it was too one. much of a tease yeah. in this battle royal. And uh, everybody, they're brawling near the ropes until FTR finally tosses out Matt Jackson. And then Red Dragon, they throw Trent over the top. But Orange Cassidy ends up having a Royal Rumble-type moment. He's on the outside. He's got uh, Trent on his shoulders, and he makes the save, gets Trent back in. In which then Trent Beretta cleans house, uh, running clothesline that actually gets rid of Bobby Fish. So we get a break and we come back. We get John Silver eliminating Cash Wheeler. And Dark Order, they're in this for quite a while. And I'm starting to think to myself, are they going to end up winning this thing? Uh, Now we're left with Dax. We're left with Kyle O'Reilly. We're left with Nick Jackson, Santana, Silver, and Trent. So a representative of each team. Mm -hmm. That's remaining in this thing. The remaining seven, the seven, they circled around the ring, and finally we get a series of strikes. Trent and Santana, they start slugging it out, and then we get a discus lariat drop uh, from Trent. He pulls Santana out on the apron with him. Matt and Kyle O'Reilly, they knock both of those guys out. So after all that, now we're down to four. We get O'Reilly. We get Dax, who are fighting on the apron. Harwood, he ends up being eliminated shortly after. John Silver, he's back up, hits a running knee to Nick's back. That sets up the spin doctor. And then we get Jackson and O'Reilly. They get together for an improvised uh, chasing the dragon. That leaves Jackson to dump out Silver. And then we already, once we, I think once we got down to that final six or seven, I think we already knew the theme, yes. what we were yep. really trying to go in, working an angle here. Uh, Jackson, after he dumps Silver, O'Reilly then tosses out Nick Jackson to give Red Dragon, surprisingly, the win of this battle royal. But... I get they're trying to play into the turmoil yes. between you know, Adam Cole and mm-hmm. the Young Bucks and Red Dragon with O'Reilly and Fish. But Red Dragon, for right now, they're not officially the number one contenders, but they will be involved in the triple threat match for the tag team titles of AEW. Um, yeah. Battle Royals. Yeah. Um, I guess it's logical in terms of the ending, but I just, this company, again, this company and their battle royals, I I guess it wouldn't be so bad, not that there's really anything bad, but we're going to have to go through another one next week. Yeah. And to me, battle royals, um, they do them too often, I feel, Mm -hmm. on live TV. And I feel with the battle royal, they really are meant for pay-per-view. Yes. As long as there's something, an incentive that's worth grabbing. Um, but for them, when, when you're doing two, three, sometimes four battle royals in a year on live TV, yeah, and then you're doing casino battle royals on pay per views once or twice throughout yeah. the year. I mean, it, it'd just be a little overkill. In some of the results too, they just it, it's weird. 
Now, this Red Dragon thing, I guess you could see it coming the way they've been building things backstage. And spoiler, probably Young Bucks winning next week to set that all up. But like you said, some of these teams, like the Gun Club, they you've got to keep them around. Why is the Dark Order hanging around that long in this match? I didn't understand that. I, they're not that over. I, I don't know why they're keeping them around. Best friends, same deal there. I mean, okay, they got the win over these two or whatever when Orange Cassidy won, and they've been feuding back and forth. But, again, you guys haven't been near the title picture. Santana Ortiz should have been – I, they should have been somehow factored in to go deeper, longer in this match. In just it's they can't blame Jericho for this. You one. can't blame Jericho <laughs> for this, and I think maybe it's just a booking issue too, where you hot shot some of these tag teams to get title matches, and you expect them, like we said, to be in that title picture, but then they lose, and then you just drop them out to the next yeah. team that goes up right away because they're the next on the rankings or whatever. So I think that might be part of the issue too with. The results of these. Yeah, after the victory, we get Red Dragon in the ring for the celebration. The Bucks immediately jump back in. They're face to face. They're ready to fight. Hangman Page, he comes out though and starts to break this whole thing up. And uh, he's pulling Red Dragon back. John Silver then takes Red Dragon out. So the uh, yeah, the Buckshot Lariat. Weird. There, there's a Buckshot Lariat to to O'Reilly. Page then proceeds to grab a chair, and it's time for story time with Adam Page. Uh, This week's story was going to be about a smug kid named Adam Cole who got into wrestling a long time ago and now wants the most prestigious prize in wrestling. So uh, let let me just throw this whole thing out. Um, Now, he doesn't realize that that he is – inching close to the grave i guess but he says that he'll land in that grave with a boom so i thought this part right here just completely just it was to me took away yeah from the battle royal and what that was supposed to be about yeah like we immediately went from the battle royal which we should that should have been in scene for me. Red yes. Dragon and the Bucks kind of having their 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 thing, but it was like we we couldn't stop there. So and you have the Bucks turning face, I guess, because they didn't attack Paige. I mean, it was it was kind of weird the whole how this whole thing set up. Um, that was your first segment in terms of the Battle Royal. Uh, we end up seeing Brian Danielson, who's ready, getting ready at least for Daniel Garcia. That's been announced as the main event for this AEW Dynamite. Um, and he said that he is ready for Daniel Garcia because he had a great mentor in William Regal. We got a William Regal name yeah. drop in there. And he said, imagine what Garcia could have done with a great mentor like himself or John Moxley. So he apparently seems to be on this thing where We're on this mentor show, the, the dick that he has been the last several yes. months that he and Moxley might be able to join forces. We got more of them later on the show. We get MJF that comes out for a chat. Um, he has to pause, though, for the CM Punk chance, and he looks very distraught. He looks still like he's in his feelings based off last weekend or mm-hmm. last week with his promo back and forth exchange, which was more of a CM Punk promo more than yep. MJF. He really didn't. Yeah, MJF didn't say anything. He no, no. Off. He pretty yeah. much he got Papa docked from yep. 8 Mile. He just, yes. uh, he just took his mic and he, he walked off. Um, so he talked about how he used to love CM Punk, just like us. And we hear about Punk showing a photo of MJF meeting him as a kid. And uh, he said, uh, they used to wake up every morning because of wrestling, because he's a huge fan, like everybody else in the crowd. And he was really laying this thing on thick, very, which got more and more louder bu- booze because he yeah. is a natural heel. Yes. And when you're a natural heel, it's hard for the crowd to take you serious, mm-hmm. even when you're being serious. He went into his uh, being a kid and how he had been diagnosed with really bad ADD, and uh, but he could succeed because of football. He was a linebacker, talked about that. He said it wound up working, but then his teammates threw a bunch of quarters at him and uh, said to pick them up and use the whole, you know, he really talked about his Jewish heritage in this. Mm -hmm. And uh, he talked about how much it hurt and how that night he got to meet his heroes, CM Punk. 
who he wanted to be just like when he grew up. Now he said fast forward to 2013 when MJF had a bunch of scholarship offers to play football, but all he wanted to do at that point was be a wrestler. But then Punk left everyone in 2014. And he said Punk left him when he needed him the most. (laughs) (laughs) But MJF, he has promised to be the hero that Punk should have been and the man that everyone could look up to. So he says that Revolution, Punk can whip him with the chain and make him bleed, but he will not give up. And this is where we get CM Punk who comes out, who uh, he doesn't really know what to say. So there's yeah. just the stare down. We see Punk without a mic. He's looking He's at just MJF. Is this true? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And ask him if it was true. MJF says it's true. And then he ends up leaving. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he might have faked a tear or two out of his yeah, eyes. Yeah, he had some but, tears uh, streaming down the cheek as he was going down. But a very different MJF. And uh, and I thought this was going to be your typical MJF swerve to yep. mock the a- mm-hmm. audience and and kind of say, hey, last week if you bought into that bullshit, this is what I'm going to – no, he continued to play into it. Um, so this guy, uh, the, the story was slightly long, but it had a point. It had yeah. a purpose. There's no reason for me to – not believe that this is what he actually went through, and I'm sure he did. He was a kid at that mm-hmm. time. Um, but they are, as they're going into this, they're really trying to – the next encounter, they're they're throwing a different twist. And you know what I also like about it, um, believe it or not, is that we didn't see Spears, Wardlow, we didn't see any no. of Pinnacle in this. No. It's just those two just guys. Two characters, yeah. And we're using other substance to to throw yeah. you and hook you into the next encounter between these two. Uh, Punk and MJF, what did you think of this? Well, it was mainly just MJF. Yeah. We just had Punk walking out. but I'm with you. It was a little long. It, it took long to get there. I'm confused a little bit why we would try to give him maybe a little baby face uh, – turn or you know trying to get a little sympathy for mjf right now with this but maybe this is where they're going where one guy dominates the promo one week and the next the next week and it it helps to build i i'll be interested to see where we go next week after this i'm gonna assume that this is just mjf just playing with punk and he's playing on the emotions obviously using real life experience but he's all grown up now he's moved on he's even gone on to twitter after the show and said yes it was all real and all that stuff so i mean he's still stringing us along i'm wait we're waiting for the boob next week but I, 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 I just, you know, you're getting ready for a big blood and guts emotional match. I guess maybe this is what you got to do is, you know, bring them in, bring them in, hit them over the head with a club next week, I guess. On the next segment of this show, I don't know if we should do this in pitch black dark. Shit. Boy, you talk about the, the thing that probably annoyed me the most on this show, and it had nothing to do and with the Jim pe- Ross. Whoa, my he go- was pissed Oh, my this. gosh. I mean, this was just... So we get Kings of the Black Thorn, Brody King and uh, Malachi Black versus Pac and Penta. Which, again, they're the number two ranked tag team. Why aren't they getting... Kings of the Black Throne, Yeah, why aren't they getting factored in any of this uh, rumble and all Because they weren't going to win it. And if they weren't going to win it, then it would have made you question (laughs) why these guys are number two. in this three-way match. I'm with you. So we get lights out. These guys, they come down, and they do their thing in the ring. I'm speaking of King, and I'm speaking of uh, of, of Black. Okay, yeah. And then after this, we get the entrance of Pac, who we don't get a lights out for him, but then we get a lights out oh, special yeah. entrance for Penta. And this was something. He and Alex Abrahantis, they come down, and Penta's holding a damn shovel, and he's uh, rising oh, from rising. beyond a grave, which – Reveals yeah. his new name. We turned into Halloween Havoc. Or old school Halloween Havoc with this damn yes. entrance. So it's no longer Penta El Cero. It is now Penta Obscuro. That's what that entrance was supposed to be about. They actually put it up there. He's got a new name. That's what this entrance was. It's like his fifth So it's name a new change? dark, well, a third, but. Third. I mean, it's up there. Basically, it's Pentagon Dark. That's what this is. <laughs> okay. So we got someone with another Lights Out Dark gimmick, but. Uh, they start brawling before the bell. You're which, forgetting uh, Alex's okay. wardrobe as well. Yes, he he looked the interpreter like interpreter looked like a goddamn goblin or and we have a nothing behind. Druid. Well, yes. yeah, I mean we we have no background as to what caused this this massive just 180 with the whole new dark. Well, with Penta, I guess because he's been 
you know, saying, you know, he's got his issues as well, just like Pac yeah. with with Malachi Black and Brody King. But I'm like, but Alex is now? I, I, I don't get that. Also, uh, I guess Cody Rhodes left the golden shovel because they used that. They did use a golden <laughs> shovel, yes. <laughs> So they start brawling immediately, as they should, because that's that's how you've been building this yes. thing up. So we get Penta diving onto both guys on the floor. Bell finally rings. Pack hits a quick 450 uh, for a two count on Black. Then we get Penta and Black. They're slugging it out before it's off to King to blast Pack with a clothesline. Now, during this time, we get a break. We come back with Brody King putting Penta on Pack's shoulders. He hits a hard chop. Turns that into a uh, poison rana. Um, things are starting to break down here. We get some strikes back and forth. That gives us at one point a four-way knockdown. Then Dante's Inferno is gets broken up. And now we get a pack German suplex and king. And then we get a spike fear factor that's loaded up, but then Black is able to make the save. In which Black loads up the mist. Pence is able to cover his mouth and grabs a roll-up, though, for a fast pen. So this match didn't really go too long, but I guess that was all because we... What was going to come, I guess, yeah. I mean, there was... It was a good, fast-paced AEW match. If you loved it, you that's why you loved it, because of what happened. But then, again, a roll-up wins the damn thing. It, yeah, it was kind of weird. And, and this was seen, I guess you could say, that as the with the fast count and how fast the roll up was, this could be considered, I guess, a fluke. So you protect Malachi Black in ter- even though it was a tag guess, team yeah. match, yeah. you actually protect him in terms of the loss. So I thought that was okay. Now after the match, immediately we get a big beat down on uh, with the Kings beating down both Pack and Penta. Black then grabs the shovel, but then the lights go out again. Mm-hmm. And when the lights appear, we get the former Buddy Murphy of WWE, Buddy Matthews, as it was projected that he might be the guy that might be joining forces. Oops, did I spoil it? Oops. Yeah, we get Buddy Matthews in the ring. Black doesn't know what to do, but then Matthews, after stalling for a bit, ends up jumping Penta and ends up joining the House of Black in the process. So then uh, we get... After that, that wasn't enough. We get Black, who gives Matthews the chair. They set it up, and Penta gets his face stomped onto a chair. In scene. Your but, thoughts on that? But, you know, like I told you, they're repeating a WWE storyline with Malachi and Matthews because he did this, but he did, with Seth, where Seth was the overbearing leader of the group, and he would berate Buddy Murphy and yell at him to do this, especially when they were doing the Ray stuff, which again, Alistair became a part of with the whole eyeball shit. Here they go again. Malachi's getting mad or he wants him to do something. He's slapping him in the face and the head again. So, I mean, we're kind of seen this already. So it's kind of interesting to uh, see it kind of repeat itself. We get Britt Baker who says that Thunder Rosa never beat her on paper. So she says, uh, we get Rosa saying that Revolutions, uh, this one's actually going to count. Wait, 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 wait. She said that? Didn't Thunder Rosa win the Lights Out match? Doesn't count. Non-sanctioned. Oh, this non-sanctioned bullshit. Then why do we even watch the show? Why do we watch what show? Dynamite, if the shit ain't going to count. Remember the Lights Out? It was non-sanctioned. You knew this. I know, but they're now using this in this storyline along with the Cole That it didn't count? That it didn't count. No, it did count because we all saw it with our own goddamn eyes. Okay. That's right. Would you like to move on to the Eddie Kings to Chris Jericho? You've had enough of uh, them. Okay, no more. Let Let me go ahead and let me cross that out. All right, we end up with Eddie Kingston finally with the showdown. Face-to-face showdown, Chris Jericho. We got a few security members. Oh, we didn't talk we about that about part. We forgot about the security guys. Again. So we've already got we've already got this beat down with with Malachi Black, yes. Buddy Matthews, and King on both Pack and Penta. Okay, and we we forgot another dark out too. We got a, and then we get the most weakest looking security members ever. Yes. How many security people does AEW have? Because we had well, they had we none had, for like the well, first year and a half. Well, we had more now for we, the Kingston Jericho thing. But anyways, yes. we get Brody King who runs out of the ring, 
and starts nailing one by one up the yeah. ramp these weak ass security members that AEW was sending down to apparently break least, up what there was like six of them they sent down. I wonder how many though. We gotta go back and watch the tape. How many are in the next segment? And how many got their ass beat the week before? Yeah, from uh, Dork Order Ten guy. This is starting to become a recurring trend. I just know that I I would not feel safe if I'm not in the AEW roster of security of all people. Well, getting suck. their ass beat. Well, again, it is the same ownership that owns the Jacksonville Jaguar. So, I mean, you got to deal with that. All right, so back to Jericho and Kingston. They got the face-to-face showdown in the ring. Security is in the ring just in case things <laughs> pop off, PJ. Yeah. Uh, Kingston asks what's going on with the security. And Jericho says they're there to make sure the two of them can just talk. No actions. Man no to man. Yes. Man to man. So Kingston says that this is a wrestling company instead of a sports entertainment <laughs> company. So you already know what he was digging at right there. Yeah. He said we're just a few miles from Stanford, so maybe Jericho will give them some sports entertainment, but maybe <laughs> it will be entertainment. Uh, Jericho, he talks about how he heard – when he heard, at least, that Eddie Kingston was coming to AEW, he said everybody in the back was very excited about Eddie Kingston coming, but he, the the, the guy who says he pays so much close attention to the indies and how he's got a wish mm-hmm. list of people he wants to work with, I guess he would just never. throw it into the story. Yep. Yes, he said he had never, ever heard of Eddie Kingston. He said at first he thought that it was Eddie Edwards. Okay. But then he saw okay. Kingston and knew why he had never heard of him. He said because... Kingston looks like a jobber. <laughs> <laughs> then he saw Kingston's match against uh, what's his name, which okay, yep, was the yep. Cody uh, backhanded. The man and we then, did not mention. Here. Yes, and, and hurt Kingston's promo. Knew there was something there. Jericho even told him that he would become a huge baby face, and that's what has happened. Now, everyone was happy to see Kingston sign the contract of AEW, a major wrestling company at 38, except for Jericho, though who rubbed it in that he had made it by the age of 22. And he said by the time that he was 38, he had already made an event at pay-per-views and made millions of dollars. This is where uh, Kingston says that Christopher only did all that because he wasn't there. Uh, And now Jericho is out there talking. Kingston doesn't want to talk to him uh, because Jericho is sucking the blood out of the place. And instead, (laughs) Kingston, he just wants to fight. And the challenge is on for revolution. So uh, before he answers, Jericho asks Kingston if he's ever heard of the fear of success. And uh, Kingston said, no, because I have a GED. Why don't you enlighten us? (laughs) So this actually got a nice little laughing pop out of the crowd. Jericho explained that Kingston is afraid of success, and if he did, um, if he did have Jericho's success, that he would fall off the side of the mountain. And then Jericho brought up some close personal stories about Kingston, stuff that Kingston has put on record. And Kingston said, no, careful. And and Jericho's like, no, this is what you said. You admired your uncle, who was a failure. And then there's your father, who was a failure. Mm -hmm. And uh, he ended up basically calling Kingston. He says, and uh, you think deep down you're a failure as well. And he says that Kingston can't seem to win the big one. And and AEW Jericho is the big one. So, um, look, bottom line, Kingston, he wants Jericho. At the pay-per-view, it's on. But if Kingston ends up managing to beat him, he will look Kingston in the eye and says that he respects him. So I guess this is a a, a knighting, if you will. Yes. Eddie Kingston's officially arrived. He said if Kingston beats him, it means Jericho has helped him get over his fear of success. And Kingston says the match is on, but don't give him the one Chris Jericho that uh, gave us the mimosa match. Yes. Don't give us the Chris Jericho uh, that got shoved off the cage by MJF. You know what he wanted to say there, but he didn't. He didn't say the crash pad. But he, he, he did he not. Held back. He said, uh, give us the Chris Jericho who was the first world champion of AEW. Give us the Chris Jericho yep. who bled in Tennessee. Give us the one that got respect all over the world. And give us the Chris Jericho that when you were in that other company, your boy Paul Look hated. Back. Yes. yes. Uh, so this is actually, uh, dude, I I like this, man. This was yeah. everything that it was supposed to be. Nobody was laying or throwing hands, mm-hmm. anything like that. Yeah. 
These are two guys, two veterans who know how to talk, know know what it takes to get the crowd involved, to get them to hang on the words. Yeah. And um, I got to say, after tonight, watching now, we still have another couple of weeks before Revolution. Yeah. But right now, I would have to say this this is probably the match that I'm probably looking forward to the most, just because I think this match will be slowed down, and I think they will tell a good story here. Yeah. I was hesitant when they first were pointing to this direction, and now I see Jericho using this influencer now new gimmick, and I'm like, oh no, Jericho What's... was looking good. He was in shape. Yeah, I saw but, the six pack. But that's the thing. When as this promo went on, they got me. They they hooked me on this, and now I am looking forward to the match. This and especially how Kingston challenged, and I want to see the Jericho of old and all that, and. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this match. It should be pretty good, and I'm with you. I'm glad they didn't throw down here. You didn't need, didn't need to. It was great promos. Build it up. Hopefully they don't touch until the pay-per-view, yep. and uh, I'm there for that. Yep. Hi, Heidi. Hi. Don't mind us. We're just doing podcasts. Our next segment, we got, uh, as you like to call them, what did you call them, the stairwell jerk-offs? It may, may as well be. What is with the stair, the stair the, the stairwell? stairwell the, it makes no sense. And they're, they're trying to put over that there's some multi-million dollar company. They're trying to buy guys on the roster, but they have all their damn meetings in the back stairwell. And just in case you're not aware of who we're talking about, we get Matt Hardy. No matter. They're in the back. Him, private party, Andrade. Uh, Matt Hardy says he's ready to see Andrade win the TNT title, but then um, none of us are though. No, we we kind of get some backhanded stuff. He he says that uh, he asks if he's gonna tag in Isaiah, <laughs> and then he we, says, we "No, like I'm just kidding." He says that <laughs> you know he he was asking if then if Andrade wins, if if Isaiah will be able to get a crack at the title, being that. He won the match on Monday. That's all. That's all that was said. Yeah. He won the match on Monday, yeah. meaning dark. Something that I didn't watch, <laughs> we, yeah, and we I have no idea who he beat. Yeah, I couldn't we, tell you if you put a gun up to my head. Yeah. Uh, Hardy says after that he, uh, with Andrade winning the TNT title, he suggests a Tornado Trios match with the two of them, Matt Hardy and Andrade and uh, Isaiah Cassidy. For Revolution versus Sting, Darby Allen, and Sammy Guevara. And Andrade seems to approve this. I This was just weird. What a waste of time for Sting, Darby, and Sammy yeah. Guevara. That's that, all that I can that, say. Exactly right, too, because obviously they have nothing for them at the paper. And you think about Darby, who went against Punk in that Punk's return match. They're not... Elevating him anywhere near where he should be, I think, right now. They, they've they drawn him back in, and this is kind of strange. I guess maybe they've thrown him back into this the TNT picture with Guevara when they had the match last week. But, man, this is doing no favors, like you said, to Guevara, Sting, or Darby, who should not even be even attempting to face these guys at, the, at a pay-per-view. Of all things. And again, I, I think where this goes, uh, hopefully Andrade is going to take control of the money team, which Matt should be relieved well, because his they crew. No value in this fucking Well, that's team what I'm anyways. saying. He, he, he should be relieved once yes. they turn on him because they're all losers I mean, anyways. he's been losing his ass ever since that first quarter stipulation match against Hangman Page. That's I don't know how ago. it's still bankroll. No. Yeah. No. No, they're not winning matches. Yeah. I, I thought to win, to get money, you got to win matches. You got it, apparently, but oh. not here. Oh. Uh, we get a face of the revolution ladder match, uh, a qualifying ladder match, that is. We get Ricky Starks versus 10 of the Dark Order. Powerhouse Hobbs, he's there. Ricky Starks, uh, he's, he's down there with Starks yeah. while the Dark Order, they're there with, uh, with 10. Starks uh, kicks this thing off, literally kicking 10 in the ribs to... Uh, to start, but a running shoulder, that doesn't work. We get a running shot to the mass. That puts 10 down, but then Starks is able to uh, pose, of course, because he is absolute Ricky Starks. Then that allows, that gives 10 enough time to hammer away in the corner. 10 then hits a delayed vertical suplex. We get a break. We come back with 10 grabbing a full Nelson, but then Starks is able to make it to the ropes. Discus Lariat, that plants Starks again, and then we get another full Nelson going on, but then Starks is able to pull at the mask, escape, and then we get a spear. Yeah. It's good enough for a one, two, three. 
Um, so this is really an angle, I guess, to play into uh, sending Starks and members of Team Taz at Keith Lee. This seems to be yeah, as we would see back the angle, they would bring it into full yes. circle a little bit. Yeah, it was kind of a weird. I didn't know Starks was known for a spear. Maybe because I, I haven't seen Ricky in action in a while. I, it was just kind of out of nowhere. But well, because he doesn't need a spear. Yeah, I maybe guess. maybe that's why I don't. Maybe know. that's what it was. I mean, in, in, if anything, it Starks is now in this match with Hobbs. So yes, we'll see what happens. This next segment just made me wonder why we bothered to pay people to work the camera at AEW if we're just going to have Brandon Cutler shoot the. Yes, I'm. It's starting to get annoying with the hey Brandon, hey play, and it's, it's, it's yeah. yeah. Uh, what we're talking about is Red Dragon, the Bucks. They're in the back. They're arguing over the Battle Royal still. Adam Cole, he's in the middle of all this, and the Bucks are. It's decided the, the Bucks are also going to be in next week's battle royal, royal as well. And they say that they plan to win. They're more than motivated to. And uh, with the Bucks gone, Cole tells Red Dragon to get it together because he's got enough on his plate for Revolution with Hangman Adam Page. This made no sense. None of this. And then they proceeded to tell. Brand into because you would think when Red Dragon how you saw them leave them in the ring to get their ass beat you would think when they see him backstage the first time they're gonna kick their ass and well they said that no. they plan on doing that at the pay per view once they win oh, this at the, oh so they had that much it. constraint that they forgot what happened about forty five minutes ago when they so got their I'm ass gonna beat. guess that oh, okay. your winners of next week's battle royal will be the young bucks yeah they just gave it away so that. <laughs> That's what your championship match will be at Evolution. Championship match tonight on AEW Dynamite. TBS title, Jay Cargill, as she likes to call herself that bitch, uh, versus The Bunny, someone that I really don't need to see. No. I don't. Uh, Cargill, she comes out with her manager, Mark Sterling. She's defending against The Bunny, who uh, immediately drives her into the corner for a clean break. Cargill, she lifts her up by the arm, leg drop. To the arm, that sets up an arm, scissors with the leg. Um, Carvel, Cargill, she ends up throwing in some push-ups to show off. Bunny manages to send her to the apron. And uh, for a little breather, sliding forearm to the back, that puts Cargill on the floor. Like, the bunny should not have been hanging with Jake Cargill. I just got to say that. Uh, but anyways, we get a Russian leg sweep into the barricade. That dropped Cargill. We get a break. We come back. Think about that. Jay Cargill and the Bunny got a break. Yes. Got a break. By the way, where's Matt Hardy representing the Bunny? He didn't even show over this. That's a kind of a shitty investment Well, we come back is. from the break. We get the Bunny hitting a running knee and then charging into a spine buster. Q Matt Hardy. Funny that you brought that up. Q Matt yeah. Hardy. He jumps up on the apron to throw in the brass knuckles. As you can <laughs> tell, folks, PJ did not have one Shit to give about no. this match. Well, I was just like, where is he at the beginning? Oh, he popped up with the brass knuck spot again, and it's like, oh. Yes, God. brass knuckles. Mark Sterling then throws in the TBS title, knuckles, uh, the knuckle shot. That gets cut off by the belt shot. And then it's a double ejection. Both Sterling and Hardy, they get thrown out. Yeah, Bunny so uses the distraction to hit some super kicks. Uh, but down the rabbit hole is loaded up. Cargill uh, reverses that into the jaded to retain. Uh, the match went a little over way five minutes, long. but still just way, way too, too long. long I'm, I'm Jade, sorry. The yeah. bunny should just not be hanging with Jay Cargill. Oh. Now, um, I will say, although I thought this match was very average, I can tell Jay Cargill starting to feel, get more and more yeah. comfortable. And that's what it's about. Getting she, her she's getting comfortable more comfortable with the yeah. presentation yeah. and in the ring. I think that's going to come. Um, after the match, we get Tony Schiavone, who was going to come in to talk to Jay Cargill. And uh, she talks about how she's on her way to 50-0 and 0 and wants to know, at first, who's next? What is this company in their number 50? Remember and, the she yes. thing? I mean, Jesus. She's looking for 50-0, and 0, but first she wants to know who's next. And then I think they Whoops. thought about it. Yep. And then she said, who is left? Well, we cue Tay Conti, who comes out with some booze. Nobody really wants to. I guess people are still pretty uptight about her and Sammy together yeah, after maybe Sammy bit. sat there and put, pulled the wool over people's heads yes. with the whole engagement, the proposal in front of the AEW crowd last year. Yeah. Uh, Tay Conti, she comes out and says that she is the one who is 
going to beat her at Revolution. And then she called her a bitch. She ran down. She squared up, got in the ring, charged toward Cargill. They square up. And uh, Cargill ends up kissing her on the forehead. Then the bunny pops back up, who just lost to Jade Cargill, and starts brawling and attacking Tay Conti, who then ends up hitting the Tay KO, only to then get kicked in the face by Jade Cargill. Now, at this point, this is what I also found hilarious. The timing is always off with Tay Conti. And Anna J. Like, yes. I feel like, to you know, to be fair to Anna J, I feel like Anna was in the back and didn't know that originally <laughs> she was supposed to run out. Yes. I don't even think it was even planned. Yeah. Jay Cargill is already in the process of grabbing her belt and walking out of the ring after she's done the damage to Tay Conti. She is already getting ready to go through the ropes. Her back is to the aisle, to the ramp. By this time, by this time, Anna J is running into the ring with a chair to come after Jay Cargill when she is already pretty much oh, out of the, out of the ring. ring. Yeah. So this was, like, very, very uh, funky. Anyways, we get to backstage, and we get Keith Lee, who is being talked to by Alex Marvez. Keith Lee says that he is ready for the Face the Revolution ladder match, and that's when Ricky Starks cuts in, along with Powerhouse Hobbs. Starks explains that Team Taz runs the place and wants him to mine his P's and Q's. And uh, Lee and Hobbs, they end up having a, a stare down. What I also found funny, Starks uh, mocking Keith Lee's voice tone when he when he speaks. Yes, that that right. was actually pretty funny. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, I get it. Starks and Hobbs are still trying to put up Team Taz, but I haven't seen Taz on Dynamite in, in weeks. They don't show Hook at all. They don't which show is a Star. No, on, and on I'm Rampage. like, yeah. I don't know how they're running the place because they only yeah. have in possession a belt that's not Doesn't sanctioned. Doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um. So there you go. All right, main event time. We get Daniel Garcia versus Brian Danielson. This match starts off with Danielson shoving him into the corner. And talking a little trash, it sets up an exchange of uppercuts in which Garcia can't get anywhere with some of the grappling. Uh, he ends up just says, screw it, hit some chops instead. Danielson, he likes that. He tells Garcia to chop him again. Yes. Uh, Danielson addicted to chops to the chest over the years. Uh, mm-hmm. Took him down, though, with a leg lock, and then we get a suplex that looked like a LaBelle lock, but Garcia, he was smart enough to, to roll around and not get caught up in that. We get more rolling around, and that sets up most of the LaBelle lock. Uh, Garcia is able to get a foot in on the ropes for the break. Danielson flipped him over out of the corner. Try to run in clothesline, but Garcia was able to take out the leg instead for a nice little counter. We get a break. We come back. Danielson, he hits a missile drop kick. And now at this point, the match is starting to get fired up. Danielson, he grabs a leg lock. Garcia hooks one of his own, so they're down on the mat around the same time, meaning that it's time for the guys to kick each other while they're on the mat. Why not? Cattle mutilation goes on until Garcia is able to slip out, goes for the leg again, and then we get some kicks to the back of Danielson's head. That doesn't work, though. As he takes Garcia down, grabs a test of strength on the mat, and uh, this is pretty much a technical match all throughout. There was really no out-of-the-ring action, anything like that. They kept it inside mm-hmm. the ring. Uh, their hands, they were still interlocked. Uh, they forearmed it out until Garcia was able to go for a dragon screw leg whip. That got blocked, and we got some stomping and a triangle choke and double bicep pose. That finished off <laughs> Garcia. Yes. So there you go. Um, this might have been, a, you know, match quality wise, might have been the the best one of the night. But that I wouldn't even say was like a five star by any means. No, no. But it was designed to get to where we needed to. After the match, Danielson said that uh, what he has wanted, uh, that that was what he wanted. He praised the violence. This cues 2.0 to jump into the ring and go after Brian yeah. Danielson, but then John Moxley, who had even more security. There's That's tons right. of yeah, security with Moxley. Him, yep. uh, Moxley ends up jumping in the ring, making the save, clearing out Garcia and 2.0. Garcia loaded up, then a chair, but Danielson was able to take that away. We got a paradigm shift that dropped Garcia, Moxley, Danielson. They stare each other down, and then Danielson grabs the mic and says it's on at Revolution, where Moxley might be the only one bleeding. So we got a stare down to end the show. Thoughts, PJ. Uh, Daniel Garcia 2.0, 
Uh, if they were to go take a vacation for a while, I'd be good with that. Um, they're getting way too much shine time here for guys who lose. For guys that are consistent, we look. I have we remember the record. We, we had to look at that record coming out because I'm like, what the hell is his record? Because I have not seen him win a match on Dynamite. He's 17 and 14. Well, 17 and 15. One is five out of his last. Six. Well, snap that back. thing now. So now he's 0 and two in his last. I don't know, but it was yeah. I guess it did its point. Danielson. Moxley, we're going to set that up for the pay-per-view. One other thing I know, and this might be nitpicking, but they did run over by a minute and a half. Mm. Um, that's something they might want to make sure they're watching because from what I understand, TV deals uh, are starting to come up or negotiations are starting to get up. And I read something that maybe why the Cody Rhodes deal did not happen is because, well, they need some contract money. They are starting to tighten the budgets a little bit at AEW. So they're coming up on this TV contract deal potentially. So what you got to do is try to make sure you're keeping the network happy. So if you're running a minute and a half over, that's not going to be too good. So they got to start tightening things up and – Maybe that will help them out with the yeah. budget because yeah. apparently that might be an issue here. Yeah, very curious on what the new television deal is going to be for AEW. Now that they have two shows, this is going to yes. be the the next contract will be a contract in which the the entire yeah. time you're going to get two shows during yes. the entirety, hopefully for them, mm-hmm. of of that whole contract. So I'm curious of how many years. It's going to be a multi-year deal, but are they going to go three? Is Turner yeah. going to trust they can go on beyond three, or is there going to be an option put in there? And for anyone thinking they're going to get WWE TV money, they're not. They're, they're not going to get that kind they're of. Still too fresh. They're too fresh. Unfortunately, they're, they're not going to get that big of a number. So if you're thinking they're going to get a billion dollar deal, it ain't going to happen. No, no, you're you're not. At least WWE were around for forty plus years. Yes, I mean before they decided the to start drawing. Deals yes, a lot and of now the lot stock of, market shit yeah. and all that. Yeah, that, that's, that's coming in. Yeah. So um, overall, AEW Dynamite from Bridgeport, Connecticut. You thought what of this show? Uh this one. Overall. I mean, I've been down on the last couple of weeks. This one. Wasn't too, I mean, ups and downs, roller coaster again. I yeah. will give it a B minus. Okay. I'll give it that. Um, I will give you being that this, um, that the show, you know, we're two and a half weeks away from Revolution and they need to get these things going. A lot of people I saw online so far giving this show more of like a nine and 10 on a 10 scale. Okay. I wouldn't go that high. Yeah. But I would, uh, I, I would give it a solid eight. So I guess yeah. that is good enough for a B. Yeah. So uh, leave your thoughts, comments on what you thought of AEW Dynamite from Connecticut for February 23rd, 2022 in the comments section. Slade. PJ. We're the Bush League Mud Show. Be sure to like and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, social media. Hit us up at Bush League MS. We'll be back at you on Friday because we got some SmackDown and some Rampage stuff to go over. All right. Until then.